here and here uh, and and today and as always I have with me Grog. How are you doing tonight, Grog? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. I'm glad you got the difficult pronunciation correct. Hmm. I know. It's a twist. Very much so. A night Shyamalan twist. M night Shyamalan. As promised, we are going into Avatar: The Last Airbender, the cartoon series, not the movie with the bad pronunciations. Because, <laughs> well, I don't know what Mister Movie Twist Man was thinking when he taught his people how to pronounce their names. But mm, that was horrible. Every time the names were bringing it up, I was going, that's wrong! I wonder if it was just kind of done on purpose to make, like... Because you have to know, like, fan bases like that, they were just, like... Imagine uh, if, like, uh, for, like, the Star Trek uh, Next Generation movies, Hello, I'm Captain Picard. Or, like, some sort of, like, weird, like... I, I'm a wolf. Or, you know, like... They're just, uh randomly like mispronunciating like everyone from like the TV show. Yeah. But the, th- but the thing is, you know, they said Zuko, right? Iro was spelled uh, pronounced correctly. Katara. It was not Ka Para. And um I'm blanking on her brother. Ahsoka? Ah, uh, Sokka. Which I probably you know. I, I probably did the Shyamalan voice. Right? So I, was, I was thinking about, like, I was listening to the, uh, I was watching this show, and I was trying to think of what, uh, and trying to remember what the movie versions uh, for all the characters were. Yeah, that was that's just horrible. I mean, you're sitting there, okay, double A. I can see you mispronouncing Ang to Ong because it's A A N G. Okay, fair enough. But Avatar? <laughs> My seven-year-old, who can barely read, could pronounce that right because he's learning how to speak English. As, as he should. That's just horrible. No wonder they didn't make the next two. Yeah. And, you know, it's... You, know, you feel bad. Well, how, but I remember when the movie came out, uh, my sister was like ranting about the whole thing and uh, was just complaining to me endlessly about uh, what they did to that movie and how it basically it, it, the movie just like immediately starts running and doesn't stop. <clears throat> That's a fair assessment. That movie does pretty much start running and not stop. Uh, but before we get into our uh, film, I guess, uh, uh, not our film, our show, uh, what are you uh, smoking tonight? Tonight, I am smoking one of my favorite pipes, as you know, the Missouri Meerschaum Cobbett Shire. And in it, I'm smoking some Best Brown Flake. Ooh, nice. It's a good one. How about you? It looks like a bulldog tonight. Yes, uh, this is my uh, Stanwell Vario, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, love the coloring of this one. And uh, I'm actually having uh, Stoka Bee's uh, Luxury Bullseye Flake. Also a good one. Yeah, you know, I haven't... Uh, I used to be really into vapors, and then uh, it became more of just kind of like a occasional thing as I, you know, got more into burlies, but... And I was just like, you know what, I'll have some and, and see how that goes. And uh, it's quite good. Quite enjoying it. Yeah, for me, it's always been an, an occasional thing. Like, I, I I bought some. I buy some every two years because uh, two ounces will last me about two years because it's that occasional. But yeah, so we watched the first episode of a cartoon series that's like, what, 
on the order of around 20 years old ish is it really 20 i thought it was more like i thought it was like 15 or so i said ish yeah well i thought it was yeah i thought it was like kind of like mid 2000s that it started i'm thinking well let's find out i'll go over to ye old imbd and I really should put this app on my front screen instead of having to search it every time I need it. I mean, I literally almost need it every week on recording day. Right. Uh, started in 2005, ended in 2008. So if we go by... Um, Man, that one was a little louder than the rest of them. If we go by, uh... Oh, shoot. Year it came out, we're not that far off 20 years. It's only 16 years since it first aired. That's scary to think. I know, right? Yeah. So did you watch the show when it first came out? No, I discovered it later. It was already off the air by the time I discovered it. Mm. It was one of those things, right after I first started being in the uh, non-working sector, I, uh, well, we didn't have kids yet, so uh, I was, you know, just getting ready to, I was doing some job hunting, and you know as well as I do, job hunting doesn't really take up a lot of time. If you do it every day and, you know, an hour a day, that's usually enough. Mm-hmm. But that leaves you with 23 other hours, my uh, not including sleep. So, you know, that still leaves you with a good portion of your day where you got to fill some time. So uh, I found it on TV. You know, I was watching it on uh, um, YTV, I think, is our channel for it here. Hmm. For the for the kids shows, one of them anyway. Yeah. So, oh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Let's check this out. And jumped in about. I don't know what episode I I started it on. And that's kind of weird. I'm gonna check Netflix, see if it's got it. Sure enough, Canadian Netflix had it at the time. It's been on. It's been on there for a while. So I stopped where I stopped watching it on cable and started in, in episode one and watched it through. Hmm. And that's was. Oh, seven years, seven, eight, seven, eight years ago. So about 2012, 2013. So like four or five years after it would already been off the air for a while. But I enjoyed it immensely right away. And uh, I thought it was cool. It's a great, great, uh, great set of characters. Great story. And of course, you know, Having been in martial arts myself, the characters using martial arts styles to do their bending, that was right up my alley. That's awesome. For me, uh, actually, the like I'd heard of the sh- like I would see kind of like ads for it and stuff, but I didn't really watch the show. And actually, the first episode I watched was uh, the finale uh, because. Uh, my sister wanted to watch it. My sister and my dad wanted to watch it. And uh, we were all together at the time. And uh, I think uh, my friend Marcus also highly recommended it. And so I watched, I started watching it, watched the first couple episodes. And then um, I introduced it to my wife. And uh, she started to watch it. And Little did I know, I, I thought it was going to be one of those things that we watched together, but I remember th- this was when I was doing my grad school work, and I remember being in the office working on things and hearing the character voices and being like, wait, what's going on? And I walk out, and she's watching it, and just being like, well, I thought we were going to watch it together, and she was like, I, I wanted to watch more, and uh and so I, I only got to watch like the first seven or so episodes uh, of it and then just kind of gave up. Uh, but I always wanted to go back and watch it uh, just because it just looked like a really fun show. 
and it is. It's a little slow going at first, but you know, if you're starting from the beginning, you gotta get your backstories all set up and whatnot, and they do it pretty well, and pretty quickly too. I know I said it was slow going at first, but you know how some of these stories arcs, arcs are in some of these uh, early 2000 cartoons. Right. You, you sometimes need to watch five episodes to get through one story. And it could be a sub-story that not, has nothing to do with what the main plot of the show is. Right. And, you know, like, you know, kind of going into this episode, I, I have to say, like, they did a really nice job introducing, you know, this world to, you know, their audience and setting up, like, everything of what's to come. Oh yeah, it's clear, quite quite clear that uh, when uh, the creators came up with this idea, with up with this story, they planned it out before they pitched it. I mean, hundred years war, everything changes when the Fire Nation attacks. And they, hundred, and the Avatar disappears. It's hundred years later, and okay, he's back, and they're close to winning the war. They they they, they knew the story, they knew the, the history, they had it all planned out before we even. Would have seen the first episode, whether whether it aired live or you saw it four or five years after it was off. Like I mean, they knew where the, the story they wanted to tell, and they went for it. Yeah, absolutely. And you have a real interesting mix of characters too. You know, you have uh, you know, and you know, we start off with the, you know our two. I, I don't know. If they, I don't know if I would necessarily call them point of view characters but uh, you know we have uh, the the brother and sister um uh so um Sokka and uh uh Katara and uh you know, you know Sokka you know, does has no uh bending abilities and is just uh you know looking to protect his village and uh, uh Katara is interested in you know developing this uh water bending ability that she has she can manipulate it but she's not very good at it and wants to learn how to be proficient at it but you know in the process of bickering they uh unleashed the avatar from uh, being frozen in ice yep which leads us to the actual introduction to the, of the uh, main antagonist for the first two seasons of the show, pretty much. Zuko and his uncle Iroh mm -hmm. from the Fire Nation. He's the Fire Nation prince, son of the madman who rules the Fire Nation, although you will not see him till practically the third season. Voiced by everyone's right? favorite Joker, Mark Hamill. Mm hmm And what I like about this is that you're immediately showing two contrasts between Aang and uh, Zuko. And the fact that Aang is very carefree, friendly. Uh, he's, you know, smiling all the time. Uh, he kind of sounds a little bit like uh, either Charlie Brown or one of the Peanuts gang. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, just his eyes are very bright and uh, just, you know, excited, almost hyperactive. And then you meet Zuko, who's very singularly determined, um, you know, menacing. He has that uh, scar over his eye. Uh, he has, you know, his hair done in the style of a warrior and uh, is just constantly training and uh, takes himself even more seriously than uh, his uncle, who's much more relaxed and uh, I wouldn't say carefree, but just kind of, uh, you know, go with the flow. Very much so, very much so. Yeah, even though he's, you can tell that he's on the, you know, the bad side, you can at least tell that the uncle doesn't seem like he's all that bad. Y 
Yeah. Iroh's great. He's like one of my favorite characters in the entire uh, entire series, and you, we meet him right away, episode one. The lovable yeah. uncle with the the weird wisdom and, and in, insatiable appetite. In a way, yes. he's very much like Sokka. Yes, uh, and it, you know it's a good, it's an interesting to balance you know Zuko out with that character I mainly mean, because like the rest of his family is kind of insane but uh, it's interesting to have someone that's on a dark path with a you know a mentor figure that's trying to urge him back from that path normally like we're used to kind of characters that are you know like you know Palpatine that's like uh, you know you know trying to push Anakin more and more towards the dark side in the prequels or uh, you know they're always kind of edging them closer but uh, with you know uh, Iro right um, Iro Iro okay Iro um, he's you know very much you know like He's really like his, almost like his true father, in a sense, and is trying to just urge him to, you know, just trying to give him clarity and you know wisdom, kind of like what you were saying mm-hmm. that he you know, gives uh, that good advice, and uh, I, I find that to be very just appealing and interesting because really, like, I can't think of a whole lot of other shows that really does it like that there aren't many there aren't many yeah which you know it explains kind of why and and really like one of the reasons why i'm excited to watch this show is um just to watch zuko's arc because uh, it's one of my favorite character arcs in any story of watching, you know, someone becoming and going from being a rival to, you know, being an you know trusted ally, and you know actually seeing the light and doing it in a really like a, a strong and convincing way. That's very earned from uh, the narrative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and let's see what else we got going on. Like, the epi- this first episode is really the only one that moved kind of slow uh, in, in my recollection of the series. I mean, it's not—it wasn't a bad slow, but you know, he, he's getting the establishment going on. Showing yeah, it lets how- you know that it lets you know where you're going to see like kind of weird animals with yep. like six six uh, six limbs and. Uh, other little things like that. No kidding. And it's like you're sitting there going, okay, like, what is this thing? Like, it's a penguin with four flippers, two legs, and no beak. Looks kind of like an otter. Mm hmm. It's fun. It's familiar yet fantastic. <laughs> it reminds me of the uh, second season, going ahead just a little bit, to where you see a certain animal. As, that, as we see that animal all the time. Instead of some combination of like a, a you know, a wolf duck or a platypus bear. We just see what's regular for us and they're, they're going, no, they're on a, a, this kind of a thing and that kind of a thing. Nope, it's just a this. It's hilarious. <laughs> But I think, you know, episodes like this you kind of need a, a good setup episode. And it, uh, it does so without, like, really kind of, you know, beating you over the head with uh, narration or, um, you know, talking about it. You know, you see, like, the old Fire Nation naval vessel from 100 years ago. And that slow revelation of who, um, of Aang, you know, you know, realizing how old he, he truly is. 
as well as like what life is like in just a regular village like in these circumstances we're not in a capital we're not in oh, no. some sort of like big place we're in the backwoods Tatooine per se very much so and we do spend some time as the series progresses in some capitals and uh but really the majority of the show is it's a traveling show i mean they travel all over the place for three full seasons it's it's great you don't just get stuck in one place for too long yeah i'm very uh, uh i've seen bits and pieces of the series and so i'm excited to you know explore those places yeah So yeah, really, we don't really have that much to talk about, like we've, uh, as far as the episode goes, because of how it's set up. It's just like it's you, you get your background. You, your Hundred Years War, Fire Nation started it a hundred years ago. You get your you get your background history of the entire universe pretty much in one ep in one twenty eight minute episode. Yeah, and it's not just that. I think also you know they do a pretty good job of painting the starting mm -hmm. picture of who these characters are. You have, uh, you know, uh, Sokka that's, you know, trying to be an adult and, you know, the leader in a position that he's not really ready for, but it's kind of been thrust upon him. Uh, you have uh, Katara being, uh, you know, hopeful, you know, and uh, desiring to become something more of herself. Uh, Aang's just kind of like trying to figure out exactly what's happened since uh, you know being uh, stuck in ice. Right. And Zuko is on the warpath looking for the Avatar. So he can get his honor back. The recurring theme of the entire show. But it's a, yeah, it's a good one. You know, again, it's not not a whole lot to, to speak of, but uh, it's a very good setup. Absolutely. Now, as promised, when we were going to talk about Avatar, which we've done for half an hour or so, now it's pipe smoking time because we are a dual themed so themed show, and we tend to spend more time talking about TV and stuff than we do pipes. Right, and we want to be able to kind of do both when we uh, when we can. But admit <laughs> admittedly, tonight we had a little bit of a difficulty kind of coming up with a topic. Not that there isn't stuff to talk about, but just one that would you know, you know we had a couple of ideas, but we felt that those would be good enough as like full episodes in and of themselves right plenty of fodder for full pipe smoking episodes on syndicated pipe club but we just we already had a topic for half the show so we, we did come up with one and we've decided on talking about who we'd like to smike smike a pope with Oh my gosh, smoke a pipe with. And that can be fictional, historical, somebody we know today, anybody at all. Most, a, lot of, a lot of people have, have raised this topic, but I don't think we have before. So that's where we're going. I'm trying to fix my tobacco right now so I can smoke the rest of this bowl. There was a big clog in it. I guess I got it figured out. I got relights. Yeah, I, I, I kind of had to do the same thing. <laughs> Lake tobaccos are all right, people, but they can clog you up sometimes. Yes. Ah, much better. So, Greg, who, who, who would you like to smoke with? If you could smoke with anybody, fictional, real, otherwise, who would it be? That is a good question. And, uh... 
it, it's tough because like there's uh you know immediately like my mind wants to go to you know someone like uh you know lewis or tolkien but uh i you know i think those are kind of like the expected answers kind of with a lot of people i would probably pick um for me i would pick probably uh another favorite author of mine uh by the name of uh, mr james who was a uh, kind of a lie like he was around a, a little bit before lewis and tolkien uh although there might have been some concurrency uh and uh you know, there's a lot of similarities that he does share with uh, tolkien and the fact that uh you know he was very into uh, medieval um studies uh he cataloged a lot of uh old um manuscripts from uh, the past and uh he wrote ghost, ghost stories that dealt a lot with uh um you know antiquity and the past and uh the dark things related around it and i think it would be really interesting to talk to him uh just because uh, i i'm fascinated by all that history and i would love to just you know learn more from someone that's so well learned uh, like that and uh you know he definitely uh you know smoked a pipe uh and uh was uh i think i was reading in one of my books it was like when he would like write he'd have like pipes kind of like scattered all around the room already filled and would just kind of go from one to the next as he you know worked on his studies and uh writing and so that that kind of appeals to me so i i would probably pick him for my uh the real like a someone that actually existed in the past normally with these i would like to do someone that i more know or like knew but uh i just didn't really know a whole lot of uh pipe smokers personally to be able to kind of share a pipe with yeah that's part of the reason i opened it up to uh <clears throat> you know everyone you know fictional non-fictional historical and you're absolutely right with what you were saying about uh, the expected answers. You know, certain circles you expect you, you're going to be expected to use pipe smokers from those circles. You know, like you said, Lewis and Tolkien, and Spurgeon, mm-hmm. um, somebody else I'm thinking of too. The name escapes me now. Oh wait, nope, got it. Einstein. Mm-hmm. Mark Twain. Yeah. All those literary guys and, and, and scientific guys. But my mind went a little differently. Mine went into the fictional. The fictional pipe smoker that I would want to share a pipe with would be Reed Richards. Mr. Fantastic. Good choice. Because it is established that he is a pipe smoker. There, you can find panels of him smoking his pipe on the internet. They're older ones from the other fifties when the Fantastic Four were first started. So that's the Reed Richards that I would want, not the modern one that you know is a wuss, the jerk. Yeah, him too. Pick one. There's the first iteration Reed Richards from the first the, the first set of Fantastic Four movies where Captain America was uh, the Human Torch. Um, I thought he was kind of wussy, and and, and the one from the the reboot, he was kind of a jerk, <laughs> mm-hmm. as you say. So, no, I figured you know the original Reed Richards from the original comics would be the the guy to smoke with because he was really smart, seemed to be portrayed as a nice enough guy. You could pick his brain about all kinds of science and whatnot because he was first and foremost a scientist. But at the same time, how often would you get to actually smoke a pipe with a superhero? Mm-hmm. Well, he's he's a good choice. Um, 
it's interesting too um you know like uh, with that team um i know the thing generally you know smoke cigars but um there was a uh i think a essentially kind of like a marvel's version of kingdom come or like some sort of like different sort of uh, comic uh where it was kind of done a little bit in the future like an alternate kind of future and in this uh story like in this kind of like storyline um the thing marries uh, his love interest the blind girl um and I'm, I'm think blanking on her name um and they he, they have uh, two sons that are basically you know little junior things and uh in those he's he actually smokes a pipe and is kind of more fatherly and uh i i enjoyed that art now it'd be and that would be it and i thought that was kind of like an interesting kind of twist on him instead of being kind of like just uh you know more of like the you know rough kind of uh you know type of brawler mm -hmm. than he normally is <laughs> dressed in like a I think he was in like a sweater vest too, which I thought was, uh, it, it was like a, oh, I was like, funny. okay, the sweater vest and a pipe. And it was just like, okay, that's, that's kind of clever. Yes. Let's give you the stereotypical pipe smoker, uh, wear and you're this big bulky rock thing. That's yeah. great ju juxtaposition. Yeah. And the whole picture kind of gave off the, this like fifties, uh, you know, nuclear family kind of vibe. Yeah, so that's my choice, Reed Richards. And now that you've mentioned it, probably the thing too from that uh, that uh, alternate arc. That would that would be kind of fun. Yeah, I would like Captain America too. I think uh, you know, forties Captain America, you know, with a pipe and and all that uh, would be a a fun fun person to chat with he's always like i've always liked captain america i've always uh you know for the type of like boy scout type of uh you know character type of between like him and superman like uh i've always held captain america in high regard uh, uh since being a little kid and uh, he's one of my all-time favorite uh, uh marvel superheroes And there you have it. We would smoke with two different types of people. Absolutely. Well, do we have anything else that we want to talk about before we wrap this up for the night? I'm trying to think if there's uh, anything else that's... Uh... Kind of come up uh pipe is still out of commission the one that i broke <laughs> the other week and so i've i'm still on the on the look of uh to find someone to repair that uh, i talked about it a bit with nate and i showed him some pictures and uh he was like yeah it's fixable but uh it's going to be a little bit of a complicated process and uh but it can be done and i was like well that's good to know but i think i'm going to leave that up to the professionals to do that because I'm I, that's yeah out of my league. Definitely, that was a horrible break. So, uh, so ridiculous. I did manage to go antiquing uh, this past weekend and was on the lookout for a pipe. And uh, other than. Uh, you know, like, um, they had a used cob there that was about five bucks, but I was like, you know, I'd rather, unless it's something interesting, like the corn dog that I found a couple of years ago, like I, I'd rather just kind of buy, you know, a, a new corn cob, unless it's just one of those like diamond shank ones or the really unique ones. Um, but they had a mirror, a, a really nice looking Meerschaum pipe there, but I saw that it was like the price tag was hidden underneath the bowl I just saw the number two down there I was guessing uh, well it's most likely not 20 bucks because this is like a pretty like 
intricate looking Mearsham pipe. Uh, like it didn't have like the, the figurehead on it, but it was like one of those ones with like a really nice like design on it. Right, right. Uh, so I'm like, you know, I'm guessing that's probably two hundred dollars and somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, you know, I just uh, I'm not in the market for that right now. Yeah, that's a that's a little hefty price tag there when you got other things going on. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's about uh, everything that I can think of uh, for today. Yeah, I've got nothing else in regards to topic and re- related to the show. So I think we'll just... Oh, uh, I guess uh, TV-wise, I just finished the first season of uh, uh, Cobra Kai. And uh, it's I'm really impressed with it. Uh, if you haven't watched this show, which, you know, I... I think I'm kind of late to the party because uh, quite a few people on my friends' you know, list on Facebook have, have already seen the entire series uh, so far because it's still ongoing. But uh, man, if you haven't seen it, watch it because it's great. Okay, I'll certainly take that under advisement. And with that, we shall end her off today. So... If you want to follow us throughout the week, you can find us somewhere. I just don't feel like doing it tonight. Sorry, guys. If, you, if you're a regular listener, you already know it. You can find us. It's there. Yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to you know, DM us. Or, you know, think topics you want us to talk about, anything. Uh, you know, Leave us a message in you know, the YouTube video. Uh, or uh, Email. You know, Use the damn email, people. Yes, email. Uh, tweet at us you know we definitely will uh, read it and uh, use it for the show unless it's weird uh, but I, I highly doubt that uh, we get any weird things uh, but uh, if you're watching this on YouTube you know smash that subscribe button hit the uh, hit the notification button too to know whenever uh, new episodes come up Anything else you feel like uh, adding in? I just thought of something. I I, mean, I got to wait for my computer here. Oh, yeah. To, my no other problem. computer here to bring up YouTube because we actually ended up with another subscriber. Nice. I just hope I'm logged in over here on this one. Of course, this laptop is such a piece of junk. It takes forever. But it's great for playing music in the background. Switch account. We're up to 165 subscribers now. Nice. So it's always a fun thing to go through and shout out whoever's new listening to the listening to the show and watching it on YouTube. Yes, which we appreciate all of you for doing that. Especially those of you who listen to this in, in its intended form, which is the podcast, of course. But it's always it's always fun when you got multiple platforms to utilize them. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Here we go. See all. Ah, here it is. Uh, back on February 23rd. Jeff Campbell, thank you so much for subscribing to the show. Yes, thank you so much. So, if Jeff, you got anything, email us, comment on the videos, every, like, everything Greg just said. We really would like to start hearing from you guys out there. Absolutely. Plus, you know, it's just fun to chat with other uh, pipe fans or, uh, you know, fans of the different shows that we uh, review. You know, it's, you know, this is the whole thing, you know, like we just started this because we just enjoy talking about this between each other, you know, much like, you know, we're all kind of nerdy for some sort of topic and uh, just, uh, 
have hobbies that uh, you know isn't exactly you know the most you know you don't exactly run to a whole lot of people on the street that are into these kind of hobbies so it's just fun to chat with other fans about this type of stuff absolutely and with that everybody have good smokes great entertainment and we will see you next time chat with you later